Question 9a. Explain why trichloroethanoic acid is more acidic than ethanoic acid. So this question is quite easy. Um, so first, uh, uh, you need to know the carbon that next to the carboxyl group uh, it has uh, three chlorine. And this three chlorine uh, is electron withdrawing. So it will uh, uh, pull electron or withdrawing electron to it itself. So the electron is from where? Electrons, of course, is from this side, right? So from this side. So means uh, with the presence of this uh, electronegative atom, so the uh, electrons from the OH bond here now is get lesser, and we say that uh, the OH bond now is get weakened and easy to break. Uh, so uh, what what you need to mention is here, it due to the electron withdrawing effect of the chlorine, which enable uh, this uh, uh, to weaken um, this uh, OH bond in the carboxyl group and after it's uh, undergo bond break okay, if uh, it's formed the this uh, carboxylic uh, because the electron withdrawing is still there so it's actually uh, will let the anion stay in the this uh, its own form means it will keep the electrons to this uh, anion and make the carboxylate more stable. Uh, this we call stabilization effects of this uh, electron withdrawing group. Means the chlorine as electron withdrawing group it has two effects, which to weaken the OH bond, uh, let the OH bond easy to break and form more H plus. Uh, second thing is to stabilize the carboxylate. Means to let the carboxylate less reactive not likely to react with the H plus again and form back the acid. Okay, that's the meaning. Um, part B, acyl chloride are formed by reacting carboxylic acid with the uh, SOCl2. Um, ethene diol chloride, this one, uh, this, okay, the structure is this, uh, can be prepared by reacting uh, ethene dioic acid with the excess um, SOCl2. Write an equation for this reaction. Um, so first, uh, you need to at least recall back uh, what is the standard equations for this uh, formation. Um, so when there is a, a carboxyl group, carboxyl group, uh, when it's react with SOCl2, so we know that the two chlorine here will use uh, to bond with uh, different parts. The one of the chlorine will react with the hydrogen and form HCl, another chlorine will go and bond with the carbon to form the acyl chloride. So the oxygens here will use to bond with the SO to form SO2. Uh, this is how uh, uh, you construct the e this equation based on the, the standard equation. Uh, as we know, uh, the reactions, uh, after the reactions, it will form the HCl and SO2 and the acyl chloride. Uh, so this is how it looks like. So uh, the ethane dioic acid with the two moles of SOCl2, uh, you will form this uh, ethane diol, diol chloride and uh, two HCl and two SO2. Uh, so this is how the uh, reactions equations to be. Um, part two, samples of this uh, ethane diol chloride uh, are reacted separately with excess warm acidified chemical uh, and with the this uh, uh, this is the uh, we call en en uh, um, or we call ethane diamine um, so the carbon containing products from the reactions uh, uh, with this uh, Ethane diamine uh, has a molecular formula uh, C4H6N2O2. So we need to deduce the structures later. Uh, complete the boxes in the this uh, figure 9.1 suggest the structure of the carbon containing product. Um, so when the this uh, CO uh, this uh, ethane diol chloride reacts with the this uh, oxidizing agent, uh, it's actually similar to the ethane dioic acid with the oxidizing agent. Uh, ethane dioic acid with the chemin 4 
um, so it will form CO2 and H2O. So it will get oxidized. Uh, means the ethene dioxide, which is more reactive, also will undergo the similar oxidation. And uh, of course, the carbon containing products uh, will be only CO2. So uh, that's why the the products here will be just CO2 because it's asking carbon containing product, not the one with chlorine. And another one is uh, this one. Uh, so when with the uh, ethane diamine, uh, so okay, uh, this one is the structures that you need to put. So uh, let's uh, go to the part that how to form this uh, cyclic. Um, because we know that uh, it has two acyl chloride groups and this uh, diamine group, and we know that amines will react with the acyl chlorides to form the amide. So you need to put the di acyl chloride at this position and the diamine uh, at the, this position, and it will undergo condensation. The HCl here will combine and removed, and the C N bond will form here. C N bond will form here. Then it will form this cyclic. Part three. A polyester can be synthesized uh, from the reactions of this uh, ethane diol uh, chloride with the ethane one two diol. This one. Uh, draw two repeat unit uh, of the polymers form. Polymers means you need to uh, you need to give the tails later. Uh, so with the uh, any functional group uh, so it will form the uh, of course uh, the, the uh, this uh, functional group means uh, this one CO CO okay so let's look at this uh, how to form this uh, polymer chain uh, so you need to put the ethane diol correct uh, with this uh, diol side by side uh, and uh, of course the HCl will react and the C and O will form a new bonding right to form this uh, functional group the COO right so this is the link that form uh, so um, after that you need to draw uh, two repeat unit uh, so this is one repeat unit uh, means uh, this is uh, uh, one ethane dao uh, correct unit and this is the diol unit. Oh, so uh, here there is a, a minor mistake here. Right. So it uh, should be the CH2 uh, that bonded to this uh, 1 O. Uh, 1 O is missing. Uh, sorry. Okay, it's here. Uh, so. Uh, so this is uh, one repeat unit and this is uh, another uh, repeat unit. So you just need to draw uh, these two uh, repeat unit, uh, and that's the answer that needed. Um, okay, so the part C, uh, this uh, uh, NMR spectrum uh, is uh, quite uh, quite interesting. Um, so you need to base on this uh, the the uh, proton and mass spectrum to deduce the structure. Uh, compound H, uh, we have uh, six carbon here, C six H ten O three, reacts with alkaline iodine uh, to form yellow precipitate. Uh, this one already uh, telling us uh, this structure is has methyl ketone, so make sure later the structure you put this methyl ketone inside. And uh, J does not react with the uh, sodium carbonate. Uh, it's telling you the extra two oxygens after this methyl ketone uh, is not the carboxylic acid group. So no COOH. So this is uh, the, the hints that are given. And from these hints and the proton NMR, try to deduce the structure and see what is the compound. Um, first, uh, it's better to start from uh, the this uh, quartet and this triplet. Uh, this quartet and triplet actually is telling us uh, is the ethyl group there. Now, this is a characteristic of ethyl group. When you see a quartet and triplet, 
so you can link to this uh, this uh, ethyl group so means the quartet is from this the CH2 coupled with these three proton to form the quartet because it's 1 plus 3 and the chemical shift is quite high it's around 4 it's uh, telling us that uh, this proton means this CH2 is next to oxygen because it's around 4 uh, so this is a, a very important hint uh, means from this uh, quartet and this triplets we know that uh, inside this compound there is a CH2, CH3, CH2O there this is the, another hint yeah? and just now already uh, given one hint uh, about the methyl ketone isn't it this one so now we have a methyl ketone and we have the ethyl group with the O then the remaining is not really uh, hard to uh, deduce so because we already get the methyl ketone uh, to um, uh, carbon and this ethyl to carbon there will be remaining two carbon there so uh, the remaining two carbon of course one carbon must bond to the uh, this uh, oxygen so it's a, obviously it's a carbonyl and uh, another things that let us know is uh, the C this part is uh, CO CH2 uh, because it's a singlet here the singlet so because this singlet uh, is uh, around 3 to 4 so it's, uh, it's telling us that uh, this this one this one yeah this is a singlet the CH2 because this CH2 is not really able to couple with any other proton it's alone that's why it's uh, produce a singlet here this is the one right so this is the one that produces a singlet and another singlet here is quite obvious is from the methyl ketone is for sure because this methyl now is next to the carbonyl and uh, when uh, the uh, this uh, hydrocarbon uh, next to a carbonyl group so it's always around uh, 2.2 to 3 so this one is this singlet is telling us that is the methyl in the methyl ketone so uh, by combining all this information then we can actually come out with this structure uh, so it is actually quite challenging you need to uh, spend some time to work out with the structure right so once you understand and know the structure and uh, all these uh, chemical shift uh, then you can uh, fill in the table right I hope you understand why what, what I'm telling you now uh, of course you can refer to these tables uh, so you can check later uh, whether it's correct or wrong Okay, now part one identify yellow precipitate J of course the, the uh, alkaline iodines uh, that uh, produce the precipitate uh, of course is the triiodomethane CHI3 uh, this is for sure uh, now this is the part that uh, is quite challenging uh, for some of you uh, if you're not really able to get the, the structure it's very difficult to fill in this table uh, I mean this part this part not this part this part you can easily fill up because uh, you just need to based on the splitting pattern uh, in the spectrum then you can list down the one okay this is the uh, increasing chemical shift yeah so I tell you this one uh, the first one here is triplets okay here and this is singlet and this is singlet this is quartet so you just fill in the name into this uh, this part first one is triplet singlet singlet quartet okay after that uh, this part you need to uh, depends on the uh, the structure uh, the first um, okay, let's start from here numbers of protons responsible for the peak uh, for the first one for the first one yeah okay this these uh, triplets is from the ethyl group so it's uh, 1 plus 2 so it's triplets here so the protons that are responsible for these uh, triplets uh, sorry this uh, yeah these triplets is uh, only three proton 
so you just pre put the three protons there right here okay three protons and numbers of the protons on adjacent carbon uh, so just now uh, if you still remember there is a uh, ethyl there ah, this one this one is the triplets and coupled with these two protons isn't it uh, so therefore we know that there are two uh, protons on adjacent carbon and for the singlet uh, uh, for the 2.25 okay here 2.25 here uh, I told you already is for the methyl ketone so the protons that are responsible for this uh, this uh, uh, peak is uh, three protons and there is no uh, protons on adjacent carbon only the uh, this uh, carbonyl group so therefore is three protons here and zero protons on adjacent carbon because adjacent carbon is the uh, the carbonyl so for the third pick this one again this is a singlet you see singlet and uh, is from the CH2 that next to oxygen so the is this one so means two protons responsible for this peak and on adjacent carbon no proton so therefore it's two zero here two zero and the last one last one uh, the quartet so uh, let's move back here uh, this quartet so we know that this quartet because of uh, uh, this one coupled with this three right one plus three so therefore you get the quartet so the protons that are responsible for this peak is two proton and the adjacent carbon has three proton so you just put two three there two three okay after that at the end you just suggest a structure uh, from the this uh, all the information uh, you can draw this one uh, or you can draw the skeleton actually it's the same right that's all thank you um, all the best for the coming exam